Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll begin our first major conversation uh, on the Twitter ban uh, by the presidency. The House of Representatives have summoned Lai Mohammed to answer um, you know, about the Twitter ban. And we've invited uh, Mr. Emiri Agunwa this morning to uh, discuss this with us. Good morning, Mr. Agunwa. Good morning. All right. When the news broke yesterday that um, Lai Mohammed has been summoned to answer why Twitter suspension or the Twitter ban? Um, what did it strike you as? Um, it, it's a step in the right direction because that's what the uh, legislative house should have done before now. Okay, and it's a step in the right direction. It's um, I also understand from the outcome of the um, meeting they have um, they gave him ten days to. Um, they set up an investigation uh, investigation um, panel to look at the the reason for the ban, and um, Mr. Lai Mohammed should be back in ten days to speak with the committee of um, information, culture, and co. Okay, uh, so I think it is a step in the right direction. It's also something that the whole country will be watching out for to see if um, the outcome will be. Uh, of desired expectation. All right. Um, you just mentioned they set up an investigative, you know, panel, um, and it's it's pretty much you know the same thing that you know, happens with numerous other issues uh, in Nigeria. Um, we set up a panel. We you know set up a committee, you know, and then another committee to you know look at the findings of the previous committee. Um, is there anything that needs to be investigated with this um, whole issue? Sure. Sure. Um, I, I know that basically we, we, the whole country is asking for freedom of speech and freedom of expression, and that is a legitimate um, demand. Okay, and uh, but also we all, we all, we need to understand, give everybody fair hearing. That's what democracy is all about. Okay, if the federal minister for information thinks that he, he has a claim, a reason why he should publicly, with executive order, declare that um, Twitter should be banned. Let's hear him out. And um, if he comes out and the reason is not congenital and not sufficient, then the ban is lifted. And maybe a vote of no confidence because it um, can be um, cast on his um, leadership. Okay, So um, I think it's something we must um, appreciate that democracy is not only about is about hiring both parties and also listening to um, intelligent and constructive reasonings as regards to anything that happened but first of all um, the conversation should have been lift the ban until the investigation is over okay uh, you can't um, put a, blind, uh, a ban in place and expect us to um, give time for investigation so all we're trying to say is even if they want to take forever like the nigerian thing is committees upon committees of necessity you shouldn't put people's life on hold you shouldn't limit freedom of expression and uh, um, what if next week we find out that uh, he was wrong okay who pays for the losses of this past two weeks who does that who would do that who is going to um, be corporate who's going to be held responsible and accountable for the losses. Okay, so um, um, what happened yesterday is a step in the right direction, but I expected that the ban should be lifted with immediate effect while pending um, the outcome of the investigation. Really, you, you, you forestalled my next question, really, to, to ask you, with all the you know facts that we've seen, all the analysis to say so and so billion naira has been lost, you know, due to the shutdown of business via Twitter. You know, who really is going to pay for that? Which government agency would be held responsible? Would the Attorney General of the Federation say something? Would they just issue an apology, if any? I mean, what really is going to be any compensation for Nigerians who have lost lots on t on Twitter? And uh, yeah, we, I, I don't know about how to. Obviously, this country is not that accountable to uh, for us to expect um, compensation. But I also expect the executive governor of Lagos State to speak up right now because we know statistically um, the bulk of uh, the funds that we've lost from Twitter 
um, about 70% of them, uh, basically, is Lagos income. It's for the people in Lagos State. And that directly um, hits the, the, the profit and you know, the income of um, the people under his uh, stewardship. And um, this is something that uh, I'm expecting the executive governor of Lagos State to, uh, to have a conversation about. You, you are ruining my economy with this ban. It might not affect the people in the other parts of the country that might not be totally dependent uh, economically and commerce-wise on Twitter, um, like it's impacting Lagos State. Some presidents might also think this also, this, is a, this also hits Lagos State uh, economically um, in a bad place, okay? So um, um, there are a lot of uh, interested parties that should start speaking out um, because the, the conversation is beyond, is beyond um, what we're having right now. It's going, to, it's going to put the country into a lot more downward spiral mm -hmm. as regards um, the, econo uh, the economy, okay? And some persons are going to take the, the brunt of it, and I expect uh, those ones to speak out, seeing that this government it would not does not look like it can ever write a check of ten million dollars or twenty million dollars to compensate for the losses. Yeah. Well, um, I, 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 let's go back also to yesterday and the uh, walking out of um, uh, the plenary by some PDP lawmakers. They also, of course, addressed the press later in the day, saying you know their stance and uh, of course saying that they will continue tweeting. Um, so let, quickly get you, let's get your reactions to that also. Uh, it's a normal occurrence whenever you're dealing with democracy. Um, people have every right to be angry and walk out. Okay, um, this is not an authoritarian um, government. This is not. Um, we have every right to walk out. There's nobody that said I cannot stamp my feet and say no. I'm not comfortable with the outcome of this. And that is the whole thing we're talking about, because. Uh, the idea is not to pretend like everything is fine. Like say, if the majority of individuals um, are not happy, then someone um, should, the people that were elected in government should be able to speak out. And I expect once again, because we're looking for an idealistic expression for this, I expect people in house, I expect house of assembly of every state to be busy right now, um, making their opinions heard, and having a stance as a, as a unit, I also expect people who we, that are representing us in federal house of reps and um, senate houses um, to get the, the, the feelings of their people and escalate it to the senate house. This thing shouldn't be an APC, PDP thing. This, should, this conversation shouldn't be a party conversation. This is people. This is a people conversation. Are my people happy with the Twitter ban? And what's the best way to do it? I, it those, those, Stepping out and the stamping of feet by PDP um, shouldn't just be a PDP conversation. I expect a lot of APC senators and um, House, um, representatives, House representatives to also say we are totally not comfortable with the way things are going. Okay, so it's not a party thing. Although PDP has taken a bold step to speak out, I also expect some um, party um, um, loyalists and faithful in APC to also say this is about the people and it's going to affect us drastically if we do not speak out. Let's not make this a party thing. Let's make it a people conversation. Well, so well. we know that politicians in Nigeria, you know, are notorious for basically ignoring someone's like this, you know, central bank governor, many politicians, you know, they even, when they fail to show up, they issue another query asking them why they didn't show up and ordering them to show up and they fail to show up. So this is like a cycle here in this part of the world, the disrespect, you know, to our lawmakers, the House of Reps. So if this same scenario plays out here, what really is our hope of getting, you know, answers? as to why the government issued this ban or suspension of Twitter? Um, the truth is that we, know, we all know why this whole thing happened. So, uh, the truth is that the lawmakers also have not proven themselves to be uh, people that can keep their words and also uh, put their leg on the ground, okay? And um, when people know that your, 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 it's empty backing, these empty mm -hmm. words that you have, uh, they can easily um, override your your decision. But um, all we are trying to say is, we are looking at this, does, uh, um, can the, if, if the uh, lawmakers decide that a senator is not doing his job very well, 
and they pass a vote of no confidence and make a demand that he leaves office within 24 hours and ensure that it happens. Until they do that, then this whole thing is also like a charade. You've never going to get anything um, um, significant out of it. But once again, so far we are trying to push it, um, means that we know that's the right channel for it to happen. So what's the outcome if it doesn't happen? Everybody will say that we <laughs> we fall back to what we always do in this country, which is what's leading us to us a failed state. When things do not happen, we we always let it slide, okay. And if when we let it slide, it gets further, um, it is erased further, okay. So um, uh, I hope that we will understand that this is one of the fundamental human rights. This is beyond interest of. Um, um, tribe and the religion and location. This is for everybody. And for the first time, I expect um, the lawmakers to put their feet on the ground because what it means is that they too will stop trading too. Okay. And when they stop trading, it affects everybody. I mean, we are looking at uh, um, uh, a 206 million um, man economy going down to the Tatars because of. Um, now, because if this ever happens to Twitter, it can happen to every other media house and every other micro blogging site. And suddenly, I don't want us to see a situation where we can not hear our opinions anymore. Okay? Yeah. And, um, and so I think everybody is going to speak out on this, saying that this is not a case of um, a divide. It's going to affect their children. Their children are going to hit on them at home. Why did you allow this to happen? This is not just the rich and the poor. This is not just. Um, Christian and the Muslims, so the Northerners and the Southerners. This is beyond that. Uh, this is uh, all encompassing. I think. This so, is so what is what is the likelihood? Um, I'm sure you remember also. Not very long ago, we um, um, shared clips, and of course, they went viral also on Twitter of a certain senator uh, berating another and asking him if he was a member of the opposition uh, because he was simply speaking, of course, for um, against the challenges people were facing. Um, What's the danger of having a National Assembly whose members would think of their political affiliations first before they think of the voices of the people that they represent? And does it look, from what you're seeing today, that the National Assembly, as it is con currently um, uh, constituted, uh, will be able to take a stance for the people and not for their political leanings? So um, everybody can, uh, if you're a party member, there must be a significant level of loyalty um, towards party line, okay? That's party ideology and culture. But when you understand that uh, a people, a set of persons voted you into power and you represent them, um, they are constituent, you, the constituencies that put you in the power that you are in charge of, and you are going to go back and answer to them, um, you must speak for them. So one of the things that uh, is happening is that um, we don't have a lot of um, of these lawmakers put in by the people. Okay, they didn't come to tell us. They didn't come to get what our um, issues are and our grievances. So what are they escalating really? Okay, so they are basically protecting one angle, which is what they have: the parties that put them into power. But if the parties and the people put them into power, they must have what they, they must be balanced in representing both ideologies on both sides. So um, the the thing is that we all know that bulk of these lawmakers um, were not the people's choice, and the people did not put them out there. So they don't have any um, responsibility towards the people whatsoever. Okay. However. The way forward is when you understand that by the end of the day, the situation is getting worse and worse, that um, you can't defend the a political or a political party um, as against the people. You're going to deal with the people on the road. Um, look at what happened. We saw, we've seen clips of um, the French president being slapped by the citizenry. We've seen a lot of persons in different countries being attacked. Okay, when people are not happy, you are not safe. Okay, you can't always hide uh, um, in the party lines. You are going to face people, um, and these are the ones that elected you. So we need to start speaking out for the people. Um, we need to advise the the um, uh, the lawmakers, the represent the people, to start speaking out because the laws are actually for the people and not to favor party lines. And we know that Nigeria is a work in progress, not something that will be automatic. Uh, that will um, suddenly will wake up and everybody has party. Yeah, people interest, but I think we need to start making, taking the baby steps now, gradually and hopefully, and see before the next two, three years, 
maybe we can have maybe 30% or 20-30% people interest, and that would be significant in the approach. Right now, I think it's about 99% uh, to 1%. Um, people interest is 1%, and 9% is party interest. Okay, so as it stands, you know, we know that the AGF, Attorney General of the Federation, overcome, I mean, has said that anyone um, caught using Twitter would be prosecuted, and that that's when they will know what laws they're breaking. But Nigerians are finding ways around this using VPN. But when Malami shared a screenshot yesterday, uh, Nigerians actually discovered that he was using VPN as well to access Twitter. Uh, what does that say about someone who um, vowed to enforce the Twitter ban, threatened to arrest people who use Twitter, but is found to be using Twitter using VPNs? So first of all, I don't think there's any legal ground for to prosecute anybody for using Twitter. Twitter is an independent app. It's just like somebody band, um, putting a ban if I use a particular type of electronics in my house. Okay, and um, I don't think that makes sense because it has to be passed into law for there to be uh, um, a basis for prosecution. Uh, we can't just keep um, prosecuting people based on um, opinions of executives. So if it doesn't happen, if not, that becomes a uh, dictatorship. And I don't think even the president said that he's just the Attorney General of the Federation. I don't think he has the capacity to say that um, as a person. But on the other hand, that will show you um, that the dependency on all this stuff, I mean, uh, you can't, it's just like you say, you can't, you, everybody is dependent on Twitter and social platforms. And uh, even though you are, you are, you are making a case uh, that it should be banned, you know, he knows that life without Twitter is basically unthinkable right now. Okay, so he has to find a way, and that's this thing we are talking about. If you find a way around it, that means instead of going to put up a law, why not come out to have a dialogue? Okay, why not come to have a um, dialogue? I mean, we are all um, understanding when it comes to technology. We need to start appreciating that the dependency on Twitter for news and information is for everyone. And if you can go through the route of VPN, and meaning that um, we are not sincere to ourselves. Don't make a law that you can't stand by. Don't declare a fast when you are hungry because, I mean, don't do stuff like this, okay? And if you know it's needed, why not have a conversation, a dialogue? Why not raise town hall meetings? How do we control this stuff? How do we say this? How do we say that? Instead of putting up a law, and you know that we don't have the capacity to do that. And now what Nigerians are seeing is a level of hypocrisy in leadership. And whatever people see that there's hypocrisy in leadership, leadership can never be trusted. It's just like, it, it, it's, it's as simple as that. If, if you say one thing and you do another, then the people you are leading will not trust you. Mm. And uh, right now, it's one of the things happening, and uh, I'm sure that certain level of his words have lost a weight within the past 24 hours, because we know that uh, you're a man that don't live according to what you say, and uh, we are watching us as a people to know how many more other things do you say that you, you do that you don't abide by? All right, Mr. Emiri Agonwa, Public Affairs Analyst, we thank you for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. All right, so our next conversation still with the National Assembly. Uh, stay with us for that.